Hi everyone, I'm Gordon Bonus with Daily Extra. Today we're talking Oscar with Peter Necht, who is a contributing editor at IndieWire, one of the leading voices on independent film and television and mainstream film and television in North America. He's also uh, a regular contributor to Daily Extra. Hi Peter. Hey. In amongst the big titles that we expected, like Boyhood and Birdman, Foxcatcher did really well, and um, of course The Imitation Game did really well. And those are two films that we can talk about from, uh, from the gay angle. Yeah, for, I mean, from the gay angle, those are pretty much the only two films we can talk about. The Imitation Game is a biopic about a gay um, mathematician who you know, saved World War II, but it is directed and written by you know, a bunch of straight people, um, so it is sort of a, uh, a question as to whether we can really call that a gay film, but it definitely has gay content. Gentlemen, meet Mr. Turing. We to work together then. We we're going to break an unbreakable Nazi code and win the war. Oh. Uh, on a different sort of level, Foxcatcher has this sort of very creepy um, gay undertone to it. Do you have any idea who I am? Why I asked you to come here today? No. What do you hope to achieve, Mark? I want to be the best in the world. Steve Carell, who plays the, the creepy person in question, um, who's a you know uh, schizophrenic, eventually murderous, uh, potentially has some issues with his sexuality, um, and Benedict Cumberbatch, who plays Alan Turing in The Imitation Game. So I mean, from a certain angle, you could say that two of the five Best Actor nominations go for people playing queer characters. And if we're looking for more queer content at the in the uh, nominations, we could also talk about uh, Julianne Moore and Still Alice. Yeah, I mean, Still Alice is, is directed by a gay couple, um, Wash Westmoreland and Richard Glazer. To a certain extent. Julianne Moore has like a really interesting history of working with queer filmmakers, Todd Haynes, uh, Stephen Daltrey. So actually, a lot of her Oscar nominations have come from those relationships. And now she's almost certainly going to win um, for this role, which is you know also now from two queer directors at once. Mm -hmm. Now, there were some surprising names, some people that weren't on people's uh, radar that uh, we can talk about in the nominations. Sure. I mean, I think that the biggest shocker, at least in terms of the acting nominations, was uh, Marion Cotillard, who got in over Jennifer Aniston. Um, Jennifer Aniston campaigned really, really hard. She clearly really, really wanted this for the uh, film called Cake. Um, but she uh, didn't get in. And um, also Laura Dern got in, um, despite sort of no Golden Globe nomination or BAFTA or any of that. So uh, Bradley Cooper, also for, for American Sniper, that film has been coming on strong as of late. So I guess that isn't much of a surprise. I mean, it's, it's still a little bit of a surprise, Bradley Cooper especially, because he knocked out uh, Ray Fiennes, David Oliolo, and Jake Gyllenhaal, who were getting nominated left and mm -hmm. right. Um, Bradley Cooper wasn't nominated for anything before this. You're done some things over there that you wish you hadn't? Oh, that's not me, no. People clearly love American Sniper. I, mean, I personally don't. Um, but it's making a lot of money, and it sort of appeals to this large contingency of the Oscar voters who are, you know, old white dudes <laughs> who <laughs> like watching a Clint Eastwood movie. Yeah, so um, that was definitely a surprise. As was Marion Cotillard, um, who won, I think, probably almost 10 years ago for uh, La Vie en Rose. And has been snubbed repeatedly since uh, for Rust and Bone and Nine. So it's you know it's nice for her to get back. Also for a foreign language film, which is pretty rare. Now, so speaking of um, old white men, um, t let's talk about some of the, um, the the diversity issues this year. Yeah, I mean people that uh, you know <laughs> are, r respect diversity probably are going to have some serious issues with these nominations. Um, there's all 20 acting nominations are white people. It's the first time or the second time in 20 years that that's happened. Um, Ava DuVernay, who directed Selma, uh, lots of people thought that she'd become the first woman of color to ever be nominated for Best Director. She wasn't. Gillian Flynn, who wrote Gone Girl, was snubbed in the screenplay categories, which meant that every single nominee in the screenplay categories, there's 15 in total, were all men. Um, so yeah, it was, it was not a good day for diversity overall. It was a very old white dude's Oscars. I think every single Best Picture nominee um, has a lead male protagonist. The best sort of gay content uh, comes back down to uh, Neil Patrick Harris as host. Yeah, I mean, I guess we, s we still have that, yeah. So it's the second year in a row, actually, that we've had an openly gay host, because Ellen did it last year. Um, yeah, so that's sort of what we have to look forward to. Or it's just things don't change in the sense that the, the nominees that are playing gay characters are these tragic characters that die at the end, which is sort of an old Oscar tradition. So maybe Benedict Cumberbatch will you know, continue what Tom Hanks and Charlize Theron did and win an Oscar for playing a gay guy that dies. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for talking with us. No problem. Mm -hmm.